Academy of Art University's Urban Night Update is next. Coming up, with the election just weeks away, how the millennial generation is feeling about its choices. A little known tip of how college students can qualify for affordable housing in San Francisco. You've heard of the 9 to 5 job? We'll take a look at the new version of a regular job. And look at some movies about to open this week. We'll have all that and more next on Urban Night's Update. Hi there, thanks for joining us here at Urban Nights Update. Jackson Albert is with me, I'm Natalie Morga. Hillary Clinton leads with more than 10 percentage points in a new national poll released earlier this week. The combination NBC News and the Wall Street Journal poll shows that Democratic nominee leads 52 percent of the voters surveyed compared to 38 percent for Donald Trump. The survey also shows voters are split over after the effects of the release of the 2005 reporting of Trump describing kissing and touching women without consent. 52% say the audio tape should be an issue in the campaign. Clinton is continuing her efforts to capture the millennial vote. The Democratic nominee is receiving support from President Obama who has a huge hit with the millennials during his elections. Obama pointed out that with Clinton's history, she is the most qualified candidate for the presidency. However, this seems to be the exact reason she is lacking the millennial vote, since young voters have been known to distrust the institutional power. Millennials make up 31% of the population and many are still unregistered to vote in the upcoming election. So why does this demographic have such low voting numbers? Mackenzie Granville has more on the story. This election has been one for the books, with huge controversies surrounding both candidates, from Hillary's email scandal to Trump's questionable immigration policies. This election has left many voters uncertain about the future of our country, yet an alarming number of young adults aren't even registered to vote. Carla McCarr explains why she is yet to register to be eligible to vote in November. They probably just don't think that um, what they say is important at this point because they're just like, okay, if I don't vote, there's, there are other people that are voting, so they just don't put their input in it. And she's not alone. In 2012, only 19% of the electorate was made up of voters from ages 19 to 29. This is a huge contrast to the baby boomer generation, who made up 38% of the electorate. Next, I spoke with Craig Maddox, who told me why he thinks it's important to vote in the November election. So, I think me personally being able to vote um, it's a precious thing because your voice can be heard and you could potentially fix one or more issues that are going on around the world. And, uh, I actually just went online, took about 10 minutes and uh, I was registered and ready to go. And registering is easy. All you need to do is open up your computer Type in how to register to vote, and it'll take you to an official page for your state with a voter registration application. Simply answer the questions and press submit, and you're all done. In San Francisco, I'm Mackenzie Granville with your Urban Nights update. Elections will be held on Tuesday, November 8th. FAFSA has created a better way for students to have less hassle when applying. You don't have to wait until January 1st to apply. Students can begin applying now. It's even more convenient because the students will now be able to enter their income information from two years ago. This will allow more ap applicants to place information in their form, form their re tax return. Did you know that you can start applying for affordable housing since you are in college? I have more in the story. Rent prices in San Francisco are in the all-time high, but students like Werner Catolos are getting prepared for their future. So I'm applying for affordable housing because um, I'm not certain of my future when I graduate, <clears throat> and uh, it's important that I have uh, a backup plan. But what is affordable housing? Affordable housing means that 30% of your paycheck goes to rent, so you can have 70% of your income to live comfortably. 
but that doesn't happen often. And even that we cannot get affordable housing as being students, but we can start applying in our senior year. Natalie Bonowit, an affordable housing specialist, advises. So it's a very time intensive process. Even if you are a student now, but are looking for housing when you are not a student, I recommend you get on a wait list as soon as you can, because that list can take a long time. The housing crisis is still a big problem. But if we take advantage of our last year in school and we apply for affordable housing, we have more chances to get an affordable housing when you graduate. So if I did get approved, let's say I didn't get the job that I wanted and the amount of income that I was expecting when I graduate, I would have that affordable housing as a plan B to fall back to. For more information about affordable housing, go to San Francisco government website, sfgov.org. Select Residence and look for the open waitlist in the affordable housing website. In San Francisco, I am Natalie Morga for Urban Nights Update. In San Francisco, 10% of every building is designated for affordable housing, so make sure to check the website constantly for new listings. San Francisco Sunset District is named the new hotspot in real estate. In a recent market report by the Paragon Real Estate Group, the neighborhood ranked number one for home selling over asking price. The Sunset has been known as a quiet place in the city, full of families and mom and pop shops. The foggy neighborhood has remained affordable, quaint for decades, and residents are, worry are worried <laughs> of the new boom in, po in popularity which doesn't seem to be allowing down anytime soon. Living in San Francisco is expensive and fast paced. We have Noah Daniels in San Francisco with a story on the new nine to five. The story has been the same since anyone can remember. College students are forced to get a part-time job while attending classes full time. Advertising student Madison Kitchler is one of them. My hours are usually about around 20 to 25 hours. Um, just depending on the week, what my manager schedules me at, um, but we try to keep it around 20 because um, I'm in school as well. Recently, companies like Uber, Postmates, and WAG have made their mark amongst millennials by marketing themselves as an easy way to make money when it's convenient for you. But are these apps really an easy way to make money or are you better off working retail like so many generations before? Julia Goodwin, a student at the Academy of Art and an employee for WAG, an app designed to order a dog walker on demand, says yes. Um, I actually a friend told me about it and I told him I was like, oh, I'm very interested in like walking dogs and just kind of getting to know the city, walk around the city. And then uh, he's like, oh, I'm pretty sure there's an app for that. And I found out there was actually an app for that. And um, I applied and they were really nice there and I pretty much just make my own schedule and get to walk dogs all day. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely like perfect for college students because I just if I'm have a lot of homework throughout the day then I don't have to um, I don't have to like go into work for six hours. I You can learn more about these apps and what they stand for online or straight from the App Store. In San Francisco, I'm Noah Daniels for an Urban Nights Update. More information on how to apply for these jobs can be found online at the company websites. Marisa Major now has another lawsuit on her hands, well as all their top Yahoo Females executives. It's all because of their hiring, firing, and promotions in their editorial division. Scott Art, an ex worker at Yahoo until 2015, says that he and other were terminated to accommodate the biases and personal opinions of management. Art says his job was just handed off to a woman because his executive at the time said his job performance was, an, uh, and I quote, not satisfactory. Another former editorial director for Yahoo also filed a suit earlier this year for the same reason as Art. And he, too, is challenging the le legality of his review system. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Over 12 million people every year experience domestic violence. 
While this is alarming, what really is scary is that every three seconds, someone is being abused by an intimate partner or family member. That's one in every four women and one in seven men all around the world. If you or a loved one is experiencing domestic violence, please call 1-800-799-7233. Domestic violence amongst college students is growing at an alarming rate. We have Priscilla Mora with the story. Domestic violence is an issue that needs awareness. Young adults between the ages of 18 and 24 are most at risk. Here at the Academy of Art, faculty and staff do their best to raise awareness. They provide workshops and seminars for students to attend. The One Love Foundation works with young adults across the country to raise awareness about domestic violence across college campuses. Students and athletes got together Wednesday night to talk about the importance of domestic violence. They watched videos, held discussions, and learned about the signs of an abusive relationship. The, the foundation to solving any problem um, is education. So I think that having workshops like this that highlight the signs that you should be looking out for, give people a comfortable space to discuss among people who are also in the same situa situations as them, and um, teach people how to deal with those types of situations are the most important thing that you could do to prevent domestic violence. According to the One Love Foundation, one in three women and one in four men are victims to domestic violence. The foundation started in 2010 in memory of your dearly love. She was a student athlete at the University of Virginia who was beaten to death by her ex-boyfriend. Many people don't realize the dangers of domestic violence, but these workshops travel across the country to raise that awareness. I think it's just really important for the One Love Foundation to get awareness out so that everyone like no one has an excuse anymore to, to not speak up to not say this is unhealthy um, and like I said just to reduce the amount of intimate partner violence that happens everywhere. 57% of students report that they do not know how to distinguish the difference between love and abuse. The One Love Foundation has created a campaign called That's Not Love to help students decipher the difference. I love you. A phrase I use to manipulate who you're friends with, what you do, say, and think. Side effects include believing insults like you're pathetic and failing to realize you deserve better. If in a relationship with someone like me, seek help now. These campaign videos help decipher the difference between love and abuse. To join the movement or to learn more about the movement, become a member online at onelove.org. In San Francisco, I'm Priscilla Mora with your Urban Night Update. Be sure to check out the One Love Foundation to find out how you can help. It has been three months since the biggest mass shooting in the United States. How has this affected the social life of LGBT members? Reporter Michaela Sterner has a story. In the Castro, life may seem as it has always been. However, after the attack in Orlando three months ago, the atmosphere changed in the LGBT community of San Francisco. people have become more aware of their surroundings. A little more vigilant of the places that I go. Like, if I'm going into a big group, I don't want to be alone. It's just kind of like a heightened awareness of my surroundings. So if there's something strange going on, I'm going to avoid that situation more than I would have prior. And as from this summer, San Francisco Pride and nightclubs in the Castro has acquired metal detectors and metal wands to prevent violence and attacks from happening. I feel safer knowing that someone's going to get checked if they're carrying anything, but at the same time, what if it gets set off because I'm carrying pepper spray? So it's a little bit of a trade-off. The question is, is the law enforcement with metal detectors enough for people to feel safe? Some think this measurement isn't the way to go. So that also, that could be a trigger for some individuals to see extra security that doesn't necessarily they're extra safe. What we need to do in order to fight this actually is get to the root of that violence, to get to the root of that homophobia and the transphobia. Make sure that the people perpetrating that violence get the help too. This event did not only bring tragedy, it also brought solidarity. We just started 
provided more for each other and we had each other's back more than we had previously. In San Francisco, I'm Michaela Stanner for Urban Nights Update. Um, Recently, a new law regarding gender-neutral single-style restrooms will be completed in business and governments by March 1st, in 2017. Now we go to Daniel Bodisba with the sports. With the Oakland Raiders cruising into Week 6 with a 4-1 record, Jack Del Rio is looking just short of a genius right now. He has a history of rolling the dice, and he did once again against the San Diego Chargers in their Week 5 victory. He was asked about his risky play calling on Sunday and he said the thinking is I believe going for it is the right thing to do you've got to have the courage to make the call and the trust for them to get it done this coming Sunday they will they will take on the Kansas City Chiefs and man and many are waiting to see just what coach Jack has up his sleeve the Stanford star Christian McCaffrey has left Saturday's game with an injury Still unknown what it is, things are not looking up for the possible Heisman contender. Last year, McCaffrey broke Barry Sanders' single season record for all purpose yards. Although he is not on pace to have a season like he did in 2015, he could possibly still be in the running for the Heisman. We're still waiting to hear if he will be available to play the next week's game against Notre Dame. After Donald Trump's locker room talk video was released, many professional athletes had things to say about it. Atlanta Falcons tight end Jacob, Jacob Tame tweeted, The attempt to normalize it as any type of talk is wrong. I refuse, to I refuse to let my son think this is just how men talk. Soccer player Robbie Rogers, MMA athlete CM Punk, and Sean Doolittle from the Oakland A's also wanted to be heard and came out with their opinion on what Donald thinks is just locker room talk. Donald's attempt to make it seem okay has just fueled the fire and no one is happy with the way he is handling the situation. Academy of Arts students Noah Daniels has published her first book and at the age 18, Mackenzie Granville is in San Francisco with more on the story. Noah Daniels isn't just any ordinary college student. She is also an aspiring author and has already self-published her first book. When she's not filming for school or hanging out with her friends, She's writing poetry about her life's experiences. I get inspired to write when something comes up for me, whether it's meeting somebody new or going through a heartbreak or just even witnessing those things in other people. And while her poetry is about her life, she's never far from help when she needs it. Academy of Art professor Michelle Kennedy, who has also published a book of her own, took on the role of Noah's mentor and friend. The honesty in Noah's writing really stuck out to me, and the vulnerability. It's really scary to tell stories about things that we went through, and especially things that maybe hurt us. And for her to be able to put that out on the table is very brave, and I think that's what makes people connect with it. So that's what really stuck out to me, is the vulnerability over anything else. I hope that when someone reads my writing, they can relate to it. That's, I think, my biggest thing. Um, I really, my demographic is young girls. Like, I want them to be able to read it and be like, oh, what I'm feeling, every other person is feeling. And even for people that aren't in that high school, middle school age, the, the people my age that are reading it, 20-somethings up to my mom's age, so in their 40s, I want them to read it and I want them to be like, I remember when that happened and like almost feel nostalgic about it. You can buy Noah's book Bits and Pieces on Amazon for $8.99 and be on the lookout for the book at stores near you. In San Francisco, I'm Mackenzie Granville with your Urban Nights update. Noah is beginning to work in her next book, which will be released in November 2018. Now let's go to Jade Evans with our special guest interview. Thank you. And today I'm here with LaKira McMurray, and I'm going to be asking her a couple of questions. She's a singer slash actress. So, when did you first start singing? I first started singing around five years old with my mom. She would just want me to just sing little songs with her, you know, being raised in a 
Christian home. We just sing a lot of yeah. church, you know, <laughs> hymns and musicals. But yeah, that's when I started singing. Okay. Who are some of your musical inspirations and why? Um. Hmm. Beyonce, because um, she's not afraid to go out and do exactly what it is that she wants to do. Yeah. Jesse J, Kalani, Ooh. love Kalani. Um, <laughs> They're, they're like powerful women and they're not afraid to, you know, showcase their talent to the world and like that inspires me, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what type of music do you listen to? Ooh, a variety <laughs> of music. Um, but my favorite is R&B and pop. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like pop too. <laughs> <laughs> um, who, is there anybody else like in your family that sings or? Yes. <laughs> my whole family is musical. My grandma, my uncle, my auntie, skip my mom, um, <laughs> <laughs> my brother, and on my dad's side of the family, my grandmother, and all of these wonderful ladies that I never met, but oh, I heard okay. them. So you're just musically inclined. Family, your family, and everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, let me see. What genre of music would you like to sing, like in a previous um, type thing? Cause I know you listen to pop yeah. and like R and B, so yeah. like it would be like I don't know if there's like a combination of both, but it will kind of be that. Mm. Okay, so like a mixture. Well, yeah, 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 like a mixture. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, how do you feel when you sing in front of other people, like an audience? Well, <laughs> when I was younger, I was terrified. My throat would get dry, and I'll be so nervous that I'm like, I can't do this. Yeah. But now that I'm older and um, I appreciate my talent more, I just, it's easy. Like, it's easy. <laughs> I like it. It's fun. Um, what can we expect from you in the future? An album. <laughs> <laughs> right. Buy our mixtape. No. <laughs> get the mixtape. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> what has been the, the best advice that you've ever been given? From my grandmother, she told me to not be afraid to chase my dreams and showcase my talent and just trust in other people and trust in yourself. Yeah. What are five things you can't live without? Food. <laughs> Pen. <laughs> paper. My cell phone. My piano. All right, well, thank you for being here. And now back to you. Thanks, Jade. For more on entertainment, let's join Maria Meza. Four new film, film releases, an iconic house on sale, and a free event are taking over the Bay Area this Friday. First, let's start with a romantic film coming to theaters today called Priceless. Joel Smallbone places a man who recently has lost custody of his daughter and hopes to get, get her back. In need of money, he embarks on a cross-country delivery and he finds himself fighting to save the lives of two innocent women he came across with. Later, he realizes that he is falling in love with one of them and he will do anything to keep her alive. If comedy is your thing, then the new Kevin Hart film, What Now?, would absolutely make you laugh. This new film is the biggest stand-up comedy tour he's ever done with 151 shows including USA and Australia. Let's take a look. Let's go make these people laugh. It's so good! I can wreck a mic. Who wants to rock? Yeah. Make some noise! We sold a football stadium out tonight. What now, people? From the filmmakers who brought you the movie Gravity, Jonas Cuaron and Alfonso Cuaron introduced Desierto, a must-see thriller film that would definitely have your heart pounding and leave you at the edge of your seat. When the truck breaks down, an immigrant named Moses and 13 others take the long journey through the desert between U.S. and Mexico. But everything turns into horror when a psychotic sniper and his vicious dog begin hunting them. Moises must get to the predator before he kills more victims. Ben Affleck and Anna Kendrick star in the new crime film called The Accountant. Ben plays the role of a math genius who stumbles into a robotic company and he begins to question it. 
Do you like puzzles? Tell me what you see. This guy risks his life on cooking the books for some of the scariest people on the planet. Drug cartels, arms brokers, money launderers, assassins. Who survives this kind of clientele? Imagine the secrets this guy has. What are you doing here? Who are you? You're different. Sooner or later, different scares people. I have difficulty socializing with other people, even though I want to. There's people looking for you. If their secrets get too big, killing you. Now, let's go back to a very iconic film. I am pretty sure you remember the 1993 film, Mrs. Doubtfire, starring Robin Williams. In the film, he had to dress up as a girl, woman. Well, if you don't remember, here is a short clip. Well, tomorrow we'll have Frank, who is a makeup artist. Oh, a big knock at the door. Who could that be? And do we have enough time? Mr. Sprinkles, boys and girls. The Mrs. Doubtfire San Francisco home you saw in the film has gone up on the market and is on sale for $4.45 million. A house with such a history does not come cheap. What comes cheap is Friday nights at the De Young Museum. It's a free event from 5 to 8.45 p.m. Not only would art be on display, but the 1986 film Labyrinth. Make sure to check this event out. That is all for today on Entertainment News. Remember to check out the new film releases in a theater near you, as well as to attend the De Young Museum free event. See you back next time. For this week's Question of the Week, we asked people on the street about who they think is the craziest celebrity and why. Some answers were quite a surprise. Let's take a look. Adam Sandler is probably one of the craziest celebrities just because of all the different roles that he plays. Ariana Grande, after the donut licking scandal, I mean, how could she not be? I think the craziest celebrity is Elon Musk. He sometimes goes to UCLA to go play basketball with all of the students sometimes. I probably could have, you know, because she's famous. I feel like um, she didn't get like, like she didn't get called out when it was happening. But like if I had done that, I would have gotten yelled at like in real time. You know, somebody who's in the face of like 7 billion people around the world to go play basketball with like 19 year olds. He just goes for whatever he thinks it will be best for humanity and for his companies and I think that's, that's crazy and it's awesome. Yeah. Some names there you might expect and some are surprises. So that's it for this edition of Academy of Arts University's Urban Nights Update. I'm Jackson Alpert. And I am Natalie Morga. For everyone here, thanks very much for joining us and see you back next time.